What's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday night. It is the Earth Master out here Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. Almost coming up on May here already. 10.48 p.m. here, California time. The latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.1 into the region of Alaska. Notice down here, you got a little swarming going on in between the, uh, uh, well, out in the Gulf of California area in a fracture zone there's a couple different fracture zones that run through this area looks like a 4.4 and a 4.9 here in the last few hours with that uh keep an eye up here across the west coast we've already been seeing uh, some earthquake swarms out here around the coso volcanic range that's going to be this area right here looks like we're coming up on well about 40 earthquakes for a total tally so far uh, now, earlier this morning, we did have quite a few threes out here, including an upper 3.9. Uh, really no main quake, just a little bit of uh, swarming going on, specifically in this area. But uh, with this further movement down south here, we'll keep an eye uh, on the west coast. Uh, some activity off on the Brawley Seismic Zone as well. So this is telling me uh, that this area is uh, definitely looks like it wants to move here. I know these little small earthquakes pop up here from time to time. And, uh, you know, sometimes if you really think about it, it may be relieving uh, some tension there in the fault, certain faults. But also at the same time, it tells us that uh, things are increasing in terms of the plate um, movement here in this area. A lot of activity here along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. Quite a bit of smaller microquake activity. I want to pull up the 2.5 map and above. Uh, let's see what we got. There was a 2.8 here into the Los Angeles area. See, all, we have all these earthquakes all over the place here. So uh, definitely things seem to be stirring up specifically out in this area of the state. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that tonight. Uh, up along the uh, rest of the plate boundary here, San Francisco looks pretty quiet. A handful of smaller quakes. It's been uh, somewhat active out here recently in the northern part of the state. Looks like the uh, southern part's starting to kick up now, while the northern part uh, quiets down for a little bit. 1.1 there into the Nevada area, just north of Pyramid Lake. Not a big earthquake, a little small microquake out there right now. Um, up into the Mount St. Helens area, a handful of smaller quakes as well from yesterday. And early this morning i was just checking out the uh trimmer map here tonight not a whole lot going on for trimmer we're only looking at about nine epicenters of trimmer uh within that one area here of oregon underneath this area down into the subduction zone of the cascadia yesterday we've seen a a pretty decent uptick 278 and then the prior day we've seen about 500 and something 522 so uh ha has been somewhat elevated here in trimmer um down into the uh, subduction zone so again we'll continue to watch that the rest of the states out here uh got some movement in the typical areas typical earthquake activity in texas who would have thought out here in the oil fields and a little swarming going on down here uh outside of the san antonio area uh, now i know there's uh, lots and lots of oil fields out here Quite a few twos and uh, even a three-pointer out in this little mix here of the person oil field i think that's what it's called there satellite view shows uh well we zoom in quite a few of these pads uh, and i'm sure some wastewater disposal facilities out here as well but these are all oil pumping pads all right back and out of here some movement across the new jersey area earlier this morning that was going to be a little one pointer and over here along the appalachia mountains had a small quake as well early this morning. The new Madrid seismic zone here, fairly quiet. Make sure I turned off the bells, which I did. Just got to double check things these days, right? Uh, what do we got up here? This is an older quake there off the Curl Kamachaka, or yeah, the northern end here of the Curl Kamachaka 5.0 early this morning. Some movement here across the Aleutian Trench. Uh, let's see what we got for newer activity out here. All this is pretty old here in the red rings. Uh, there's a handful of smaller new quakes here in the area of the Maluka Sea, it looks like, and throughout the Indonesia Islands region. 
Older quake activity down here across New Zealand doesn't look like things have stirred up there since this morning's update. Uh, but still keep an eye on this area here, roughly about Papua New Guinea eastward along the plate boundary. I know we've had some earthquake activity out here uh, and some large as well, but it's acting uh, fairly quiet. Got that seismic gap going on uh, once again in this area. Down in the South America region, a handful of threes and twos, really nothing major going on there for now. And the uh, Middle America Trench, about the same. There's that activity stirring up in the Gulf of California. Um, looking at it, there definitely looks like there's more than two earthquakes there that the USGS is showing. If we go over here and check out the um, this area, we've got about two earthquakes in this area on the USGS map. But... As you can see, it looks like there's quite a bit more stirring up in that region uh, along the plate boundary. So possibly we could be looking at maybe some enhancement going on upstream here towards California. We'll definitely watch that. Uh, out into the Hawaii area, uh, looks like Kilauea Volcano seeing a little bit of movement out here in the last few hours. Mostly smaller microquake activity. So let's go see what's going on from the USGS volcano site. Kilauea Volcano still at a yellow an advisory nothing change on that level um earthquake activity there's some of that movement showing up on the seismograph stations there as uh, far as the tilt meter goes deformation data is a spot to look for that if it's going to work yes it is um i'm not for sure what happened to the data but it's offline there looks like it went offline uh a couple days ago that's great hopefully that comes back up 14th, 15th, it looks like it uh, died there on the um, 14th time frame. So we're missing the last two days of inflation data. Uh, and I'm sure, let's see. Yeah, that covers those as well. 14th, so we'll have to check back on that. Either way, it looks like we're getting a little bit of earthquake activity there in that region. Um, let's see what else we got here across the area. Some movement out in Iran, 4.3 from earlier this afternoon, it looks like. A little bit of spotty activity throughout Turkey as well. Really nothing major going on over there for now. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, aside from one little spike of an earthquake here along the plate boundary. Uh, let's go check uh, the Iceland earthquake map and see what's going on here got about uh, oh, 27 earthquakes across the area in the last 12 hours not a big deal really not looking at any major swarming down here across the Grindavik area like we had seen uh, a couple days ago uh, things look pretty quiet there for now um, let's go check out the live from Iceland site here where they have multiple webcams still monitoring this large crater area where uh, things are continuing. Definitely at a month time frame now of a continuous eruption. There's the lava field building up uh, some more land out there in Iceland. That's what it's been doing for quite a long time. Not only this, but um, just speaking in general across the Iceland area. Uh, some rift zones out there. So uh, let's see what we got for the... Um, Icelandic Met Office, see if they put anything new out. 416, yeah, this was put out earlier today. Uh, so the overall risk for Grindavik Zone 4 is considered considerable. <laughs> considered considerable. All right, that's the, uh, just a translation here that's being kicked up. Um, a crater continues to erupt a short distance east of this region here. Um... Yeah, so it looks as though land rise stable since the beginning of April. Half of the magma that is coming from depth is accumulating in the magma chamber while the other half is flowing to the surface. So uh, this is what I've been saying for quite a while. We're going to see this eruption continue and continue and continue. It could be months or longer. Um, obviously, we're at month right now. But as long as we got that deeper flow coming in there, it's almost like a uh, continued cycle here this could definitely go on and on and on until something happens here until we get a blockage 
Um, and then from there we could see other intrusions. Uh, but here is the risk assessment. Uh, it's a little blurry. It's kind of messing with my eyes here, but uh, uh, they do have Grindavik area in the zone four area, somewhat uh, somewhat of a hazard area out there. So we'll continue to watch that for any uh, changes there in the magma plumbing system there. All right, space weather activity. Let me go check that out here real quick, see what's going on in the space weather world. We did see a little bit of uptick here around the KP index of 5 earlier today. That has since calmed down, and that uh, looks unsettled here over the next couple nights. Far as uh, any major flaring activity goes, it does look like we're seeing a little bit mellower conditions compared to the uh, M flare activity we've seen a day or so ago. But uh, don't let that fool you. It could be the calm before the storm. We do have numerous large sunspots currently facing the Earth. Uh, a lot of disorganized areas here in this main cluster, but still we'll watch that. There's a, you know, a little possibility these things could grow and get more complex. Right now, I think the main area to watch is going to be this region up here, which is really not that much of a concern because that will be scooting off to the northwestern limb out of sight out of mind here soon we got this one as well and a couple other newer sunspots on the eastern limb that we'll have to watch in the coming days as they rotate into the earth directed view more square more squarely lined up uh, overall threat right now still somewhat elevated 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 60 and x flare around 10 percent chance the sfi continues to rise there with the uh, uh numerous amount of sunspots here on the earth facing side uh, aside from that uh yeah as you can see there are quite a bit uh, of numbers here 36 39 is a beta gamma delta class and that is going to be uh the one up here 36 39 right up here one of the main re regions here uh, that looks fairly complex so we'll watch that definitely keep an eye on it <clears throat> All right, severe weather. Uh, did see some uh, severe activity out there today. Look at the storm reports here for uh, this Tuesday. This was updated um, somewhat recently. Had uh, 17 tornado reports out here. Now, you know the Storm Prediction Center put out a decent 10% uh, hatched area of tornado probability, and it was right in that zone. So I think they did a good job in terms of the uh, forecast. A lot of wind damage and hail reports as well. So a very active day. There was at least one confirmed EF2. And uh, seen some damage out there as well from uh, social media sites. But uh, it looks as though that activity will scoot off here tomorrow a little bit further to the east. Still got some activity we have to deal with tonight. But as you can see here for the Wednesday time frame, that shifts all to the east a little bit towards the uh, Great Lakes area. And uh, general thunderstorm activity out here in the large region. But for the most part, the severe weather is going to be right up there with a 5% chance of tornado probability wind and maybe a little bit of hail out there as well. A look at the models here. This is a current GFS model run. Going to put this into motion and see what we got as we head towards the weekend. Uh, some more storms firing up out here in Texas. And uh, it looks like a doozy of a rainmaker down there into Saturday night and Sunday as we start the next week here. Um, looks a little slow, but things are going to pick up, I think, here towards midweek next week as we get uh, some more moisture rolling into the area. And uh, we'll just have to watch it and see how it plays out. That could be a, a decent storm system out here as well. Nice low pressure trough setting up maybe some severe weather potential as we head into, uh, that looks like Sunday night. And yeah, we'll just continue to watch it. It's quite active. That's for sure. And it is springtime. It's bound to happen, right? All right. Uh, what else we got? National Data Buoy Center out here. I think it's working, is it? Yeah, that's kind of weird. As you can see, buoys all normal. Uh, this one that was acting strange looks like they got that fixed. Aside from that, really no uh, no odd activity. Uh, I, I do keep an eye on these 
And, you know, if someone brings it up here that uh, I should look at it, I'll definitely look at it. But a lot of times these things do malfunction and they'll show, you know, 3,000, 4,000 foot water height drop. And, you know, we really think about it. That's an error, technical error, because something like that really happening, it would show up across the board on every single station. And uh, we would know about it. That's for sure. But right now, everything's quiet. Everything's... Um, looks calm seismograph stations out here look pretty calm as well i do have the majority of the stations that i normally have here reset the stream earlier actually the stream uh yeah the stream went down early this morning about three o'clock my time in the a.m so i had to get that back up and running it, it does that on occasion i don't know why but uh you know someone likes to pull the plug on me think it's funny i don't know but Anyway, we'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow, Wednesday. Pretty close to Friday again. Got a couple more days to Friday, but it's right around the corner, folks. Um, all right. Have a good night. Stay safe out there and um, just uh, be prepared.